welcome. My name is Sarah and I'm going to lead a Dharma style practice. This is a Hatha Raja practice inspired by the lineage of Sri Dharma Mitra. He teaches in New York still. His guru was Yogi Gupta, who I believe his guru was Swami Sivananda. So this is part of the Sivananda lineage. Start off with a tall spine. And if you feel uncomfortable sitting cross-legged, sit on top of something. Take both of your hands into Yana Mudra, it looks like the OK sign. And then you can place the hands on the knees. Soften your eyes closed and look at the space in between your eyebrows. You might see colors or shifting lights. Just keep watching and remain unconcerned. The sound of Om, the universe is humming sound. We'll chant the sound of Om three times to invoke the practice. The mantra for purification purifies the ground, the air, and the 72,000 psychic channels in your body. I'll do two rounds of call and response, and then one round we can do together. So listen, and then repeat, and for the final round, mimic the words as best as you can. Om Apavitraha Pavitruva Sarva Vashtang Gatopiwa Yaha Smarit Pandrikaksham Sabahia Vientraha Suchihi Om Apavitraha Pavitruva Sarva Vashtam Gatopiwa Yaha Smarit Pandrikaksham Sabahia Vientraha Suchihi and then all together. Om Apavitraha Pavitruva Sarva Vashtanga Topiwa Yaha Smarit Pandrikaksham Sabahya Vientraha Suchihi Now for the physical practice. We'll start off with Suri Namaskar C. And you can let the breathing be normal. We'll do three rounds right, three rounds left. Arms up, arch the back. Fold over the legs. Step the right foot back, bring your knee down, lift the gaze. Feet together, it's plank. Ashtangasana, knees, chest, chin. Cobra pose. Downward dog. Leading with the right, right foot through, knee comes down, head up. Feet together, 
forward fold with the cup, arms up, hands to the heart. Go back, guard forward, left foot back, plank, knees, chest, chin, cobra, downward dog, left foot through, feet together, go up, hands to the heart, Arch your back, fold forward, right foot back, plank, knees, chest, chin, cobra, down dog, right foot through, forward fold, arms up, hands to the heart. Again, go back, fold forward, left foot back, plank, knees, chest, chin, cobra, down dog, left foot through, feet together, arms up, hands to the heart. One more round. Lead with the right foot. Right foot steps forward. Hands to the heart. Create a little space in between your palms. And in this place, put somebody that you love so that you can carry them with you as you practice. Offering up the fruits of your practice to this person who needs it. Standing back bend. Any variation, I'm going to do feet, hips, width, hands to low back. So that's the one that feels the best to me. But if you have a different variation, go for it. When you've had enough, forward fold. Hands go to the low back, interlace fingers, squeeze shoulder blades in, stretch your chest. Maybe a couple of bounces. Bend the knees, shake the head out. Hands to the lower back, to the floor, plank pose. Vinyasa or straight to dog pose. Stretch your left leg up, point the toes. Try to touch the top of the head to the floor. Hug the knee in, step your foot through, Papyasana. Interlace your hands, release the index, cross the thumbs, Kali Mudra grip. Wiggle the shoulders. Sukha Trikonasana, left hand down, right arm up. It's okay to look at your thumb. Be 
feel the breath moving in and out of the nose. Back into Kapyasana. If you like advanced variation, lean forward, bend the back knee, catch hold of your foot. This might be enough, or put the foot inside of your elbow crease. Shake hands overhead. The longer you hold poses, the more your body gets used to them, and you start to relax in the pose. Gently break the pose. Step your front foot in, so it's a square lunge. You make a little square between the legs. Hands to the heart, and twist. If it's okay with the neck, look up, pull the abdominals in, rotate the spine. Stay here a little longer. Hands on the floor, plank pose. Feet together, left hand, roll onto the left side body, vasisthasana. So modified variation, knee comes to the floor underneath the hip. Dharma style, take your right toes, step them on the floor behind you. It's like a flip dog variation. Plant the left foot down and push the pelvis up, stretch the chest. Push into left foot, left hand, Hover right knee in the air, catch hold of your knee. Pull on the knee as you arch your upper back. Lean back. Slowly return, plank, roll onto the right side. If it's okay on the body, take same side, same style as left side. Push into the right hand, right foot, hover the knee, keep the eyes steady. As you're ready, pull on the knee, open the hips, lean back, back bending variation. Point the lifted toes, straighten the bottom leg as much as you can. Slowly plank. Vinyasa. Couple of bounces. Move the head towards the floor. Open the shoulders. Right leg goes up. Point the toes. Get in a stretch. Down dog splits. Step your foot through. Kapyasana. Offer it up to the person you put between your hands. Easy triangle. Right hand down, left arm up. Look at your thumb. Return, previous pose, Kapyasana. Bend the back knee, catch hold of your foot. Foot goes inside of the elbow crease, maybe shake hands. Steady your eyes on one spot. A steady concentration becomes a meditation.
Break the pose. Square lunge. Slide the front foot up. Hands to the heart. Twist. Find stillness in the pose. Break the pose, plank. Feet together, right hand. Roll onto right side body, Vasisthasana. Your variation. I'm gonna go for the back bending variation. I step my top left leg back, walk the right foot in a little bit. Turn the right fingers in and start to lift the chest. Maybe I touch the floor. Push into the right hand, come back over, plank, roll onto the left side. Any variation, for back bending variation, turn the left fingers away from you. Step the right foot behind you, walk the left foot in, lift the pelvis, stretch open the chest. Maybe you touch the floor. Vinyasa. I'll take child's pose, rush the nose forward, cobra, and downward dog. Touching the head to the floor. Left leg up, left foot through, warrior two pose. Reverse warrior. Side stretch. Side angle pose. Top arm down and around the back. Bottom arm underneath. If it's easy to shake hands, catch hold of the top wrist. Squeeze the top arm straight. Yana mudra. Roll the chest open. Maybe you squeeze the front leg straight. Balance triangle. You can also, if your mind's really wandering off, you can slide the back foot up a little bit and balance on your left leg. Return, warrior two. Find your arms behind your back, maybe the left thumb on the top. Stretch the chest, hold on the inside of the leg. Humble warrior. Relax your neck. Vritta Parshvokanasana, come back up, lift the back heel, twist, right elbow on the outside of the left thigh. Everything feels okay, armpit touches outside of the knee, gently nudge the left arm, excuse me, right arm underneath, left arm around the back, shake hands. If you can catch hold of your wrist, do that. Be as calm as you can within your effort. Slowly come into lizard prep. 
rock forward and back. Help to loosen up the left leg. In Dharma Style Lizard, keep the left toes forward, left knee directly above the left ankle. Everything's pointing forward. Lower the forearms down. If your knee is above your shoulder, it means that you can put your leg behind your head. says to look forward like a lizard looking for food. If it's the grocery store right now, it's like, ugh. <laughs> All right, and then come up, shift the hips back, squeeze in front like straight, half splits. If you're in the mood, you wanna slide the heel forward, full pose, Hanumanasana. If you're still feeling wild, place the right hand down, curl the right toes under, hug your abdominals in, peace sign finger around, left big toe, come up vasisasana, fold in the pelvis, the chest, stretch, return, plank pose, vinyasa. Now we're got a couple of bounces. Right leg up. Warrior two. Get down into that lunge. Reverse warrior. Side stretch. Side angle. Parsha Konasana. Bind, if you can. Leg might straighten to whatever degree it can. Maybe you take the balance. Go really slow, look at one spot, meditate. Turn, warrior two, find the arms, right thumb on the top, inhale, stretch your chest, exhale, humble warrior. If you can, touch your head to the floor, stretch the shoulder. Every pose is an offering. Perfect to Parjvokanasana. Arms up, lift the back heel, twist. You can wrap the arms around the leg. And become as calm as possible. Hold the pose. Right foot goes to the right. 
Rock forward and back. Clear out the hip. Back knee down. Right knee over right ankle. Everything's pointing forward. Forearms down. Look forward. Lengthen the spine. Inhabit the consciousness of the pose. Lizard consciousness. in the pose, heel toe, right foot in between the hands, shift the hips back, squeeze the right leg straight, Ardha Hanumanasana, and perhaps slide forward, full toes, any variations, always welcome. Stick with what you're doing, or plant the left hand down, curl the back left toes under, Catch hold, peace sign fingers around the right big toe. Pull the abdominals in. Stretch the leg up. Lean back. Sometimes you accidentally fall into a wild thing. Plank. Vinyasa or straight to child's pose. Hold of your opposite elbows, thumbs together, fingers spread, dolphin. Walk the toes in, lift your right leg up, bend the knee, and then do a little jump. If you didn't balance, a couple of jumps. Push into your forearms, stretch the shoulders. If you haven't yet, non-dominant leg, or the other one, right? So the left leg bends up, little jump. Kick the right heel to the butt. If this is easy for you, bring the knees together. Start to look behind you. Squeeze the knees into the chest. Push the forearms into the floor. Arch the spine. Try to push the chest beyond the elbows. Belly in. Stay a little longer if you like. Eventually, child's pose again. Maybe arms by your side. Look at the space in between your eyebrows. Come to sitting up. Lean onto one side and swing your legs out in front of you. Take your right knee into a Janya Shirshasana shape, bending it up. If this is difficult for the body, okay, you can put block under the knee. If it's easy, take half lotus. If this feels fine, lean onto the right hip, tuck your left leg behind you. Wrap your right arm around the back, catch hold of the foot. Take your left hand, palm out, and tuck it underneath your right knee. Look past your right shoulder and then close the eyes. Look at the space in between your eyebrows. Bharatvadrasana, India's hero's pose. And 
then break the pose, switch sides. Left knee bends in, left side half lotus, lean onto the left hip, tuck the right leg back. Left arm behind the back, right hand goes under the knee. Just do the best you can. Close the eyes, look at the third eye and breathe calmly. Breaking the pose. If you can tie the lotus, tie the lotus. Right leg and then left leg. This is hard on your knees, don't worry about it. Okay, you have two options for what's next. Option one, if you have any kind of neck thing going on, even like neck spasms, neck tension, um, or something like herniated disc, anything like that, Avoid the next two poses, in my opinion. Um, if the neck is healthy, if you're not on your cycle, uh, if you don't have any eye pressure issues, like detached retinata glaucoma, then you can do these next poses safely. So if you can't do these next poses, just scrub through the video until we get to our forward bends. But for now, is are two inversions, headstand and shoulder stand. Headstand's the king of the poses and shoulder stand is the queen. Right, but some people like the democracy so they skip this. Dharma doesn't say that. He has you do these poses. Okay, so headstand. Catch hold of your opposite elbows. Interlace your hands. Tuck the bottom pinky inside the fist. Put your head on the floor where the head palms go. So right at the top of the head. If you favor anything, you can favor your hairline. Don't go on the back of the head. Put your head on the floor, push into your elbows, walk your toes up. You can do this lifting one leg, bending the knee, and coming up with a staggered leg. You can bend the knees into the chest, heels over your seat, stretch the legs up over your head. You can also walk the toes in and pipe up. Now that you're up here, you can stay, or if you can tie the lotus, you're gonna slide your right foot down the left thigh, bend your left knee, and kind of wiggle your right heel into your hip crease. And then slowly you're gonna wiggle your left foot over. And then once you've got the lotus, lift the lotus up push into your elbows, create a very light pressure on the head with your shoulder strength. Look at the space in between your eyebrows. We'll be here for a short while. Keep meditating on the space in between the eyebrows. If your head feels too much weight on it, little back bend in the low spine and start to lift your head off the floor.
come out, the way you came in, best as you can, rest, child's pose, take two long breaths, Now, personally, for shoulder stand, these days, I use a blanket. When you use a blanket in shoulder stand, the shoulders go on the blanket and the head goes on the floor. So make sure the blanket isn't under your head. The blanket's under your shoulders and the head is on the floor. And some of you are like, why does she keep saying that? don't know how many times I say it like three times and then people still put their head on the blanket and the shoulders on the floor so basically what this is gonna do it provides a little shelf for my shoulders and then space for my neck okay so shoulders are on the blanket head is on the floor don't look side to side just look straight up do a little reverse somersault, catch the hips. And then for me, my neck's more sensitive. So I do it at an angle like this. And teachers always come by and correct me. So if you feel like your neck is okay, you can walk the elbows in and lift the body a little higher. Only go as far as feels okay on your body, right? For some folks, they can get totally vertical here. For me, this feels comfortable on my neck, so I'll stay at this angle. There's no pressure on my neck spine. I'm pushing my shoulders into the floor and the back of my head into the floor so that there's literally no weight is on my neck. It's all on my arms and then a little bit on the back of my head. Taking the lotus from here. So first right foot tucks in. I hold on to my back with my right hand and use my left hand to tie it like that. And then if you feel balanced, you can catch your knees. That's a little too intense on my neck right now. So I'm just gonna hold on to my back and lift the legs up. You can look at your belly button or close your eyes. Look at the space in between your eyebrows. Find stillness in the pose. the legs towards the head. If you can hold on around the legs, go ahead. Otherwise, just enjoy this deep stretch embryo pose. Slow motion. Roll the spine down. If you have the lotus, keep the lotus. Lift the chest up, put the top of the head on the floor, and catch hold of your feet. Touch your tongue to the place where the two front teeth meet the gums. This creates a mudra, a psychic seal in the body. Look at the third eye. Stay here a little longer or break the pose. Shavasana, pretend like you could go to sleep. Rocking chair, be, again, be careful with your neck. Legs go up over the head and then you roll yourself up seated for a fold. Swing the leg back, plow, seat it forward, fold. Do this a couple of times. Just go as far as feels okay on your body.
end up in a seated forward fold. Here's a different variation. Catch hold of your heels, point your toes, and move your body towards your legs. Come on up, spread your legs apart, hands behind you, open your chest. If it's available, lean forward, catch the feet, push the legs away, move the head to the floor. Inhale to your tailbone. Exhale, back up from the tailbone to the top of the head. Inhale from the top of the head to the tailbone. Exhale, tailbone, top of the head. Come up. Bring your legs in a little closer so they're just a little wider than your shoulders. See, grip your ankles, bring your arms under your legs. So you can stay here or bend your left arm underneath you, shake hands, and then straighten the legs. If it's easy, lift the heels off the floor. Come up, find the other side, straighten the legs. Maybe lift the heels off the floor. And then, option, wiggle up. You know, I have to say something. Dharma calls this the weight loss pose. And I used to be able to do it all the time, and then I gained weight, and I couldn't do it anymore. So I was like, damn it but I think it was too skinny then. Anyways, the other day, I did it, even in my new body, so. I don't know if this is the weight loss pose. I think it's more concentration, and just be careful with your back. But you gotta get your arms like way underneath you. Ugh. And then you can shake hands behind your back. I can't do it today, too tight. And then legs go straight. You might lift the heels up here, if it feels good. Okay, if you can lift up from Titty Basna, from here, go for it. Otherwise, this is our last forward bend. So you're gonna come up into a forward fold Catch hold of your heels, wiggle your arms into your body, put your hands on the floor behind you, bend your elbows, and sit down on your arms. And then lift the legs up. So your arms are like a little shelf for the legs. Ooh, and then you can tip it up. Or you can move it back into Bakasana. Squeeze your legs around the outer upper arms. Jump your legs back from there. I'm gonna do a child's pose. And we'll meet up in Cobra. Oh, laying on the belly. Okay. So we'll do these back bends here. A twist and then Shavasana. Cobra pose. Lift up just as high as feels okay on your spine. Look at the space in between your eyebrows. I don't know about you, but my spine's a little sensitive right now from all those forward folds. But in my experience, it'll feel a little sensitive, but if I take it slow, it'll warm up to go back and then I'll be fine. I think the danger is like jamming into it, right? So I just kind of ease into it like, oh, okay. Feeling a little warmer here, not pushing it, just sensing. And then we can take a break, two breaths. Okay, 
Okay, second set. It's all right if your spine's still feeling sensitive right now, just like little, little baby cobra. Warming up the back, strengthening your low back muscles, or squeezing. Or if you're like, oh yeah, I feel okay. You can lift up a little higher, bend the elbows, pull back on the hands, back bend behind the heart. Maybe lift the chin up, throw it up. Feel the body get warm, open. When you're ready, come down, rest, two breaths. Inhale into every cell in your body. Exhale back out every cell. Okay, bend the knees and take cobra with the bent knees. I used to also worry about how far I went in this. Just sense where your limit is. Sometimes you can walk the hands in, bend the elbows, use a little gravity on the pelvis here. Squeeze the hamstrings, head, feet to the head. When you're ready, break the pose. Make a pillow with the hands, rest the forehead. Take two long breaths. One more back bend. If you're a back bend happy person, you can pause the video here and just keep going, right? Spine's pretty warm now. Personally, I'm gonna do a camel pose. Now, with camel, you just hold it as long as feels good to you. I'm gonna hold it for a long time because I feel the longer I'm in this pose, the more I relax into it, and then also there's this energetic Flow that starts to happen that when I come out I feel amazing so I'm gonna I don't know how long I'm gonna hold it but you're invited to hold it for the full time if you start feeling dizzy just come out rest When you've had enough, find seated meditation, feel the arms and the chest. Ardha Matsundrasana. Left leg is tucked underneath you, right leg up and over. Twist to the right. Switch legs, hips down, chest up, twist to the left.
back center. I'm going to add one pose in. This isn't Dharma style to do a pose other than Shavasana after C spine twist, but I'm really feeling Tarasana to stretch out my back. So the heels are away from the groin versus butterfly heels are towards the groin. This one heels are away because it gets a little more into your IT band outside of the leg. And then yin style, you just hang. Um, in Dharma style, you take Kali Mudra and hook it over your toes, bend the elbows forward. So go ahead, lie down, rest, Shavasana. Walk the feet open, palms up by the sides. If your back hurts, bend the knees, plant the feet on the floor. And now I'll go ahead and pause the video and take as long a Shavasana as you want, five to 10 minutes. When you finish taking your Shavasana, you'll roll to one side and come into the meditative seat that we started the practice in. Or if you're warm enough right now and you wanted to tie a full lotus, go ahead and tie a full lotus. Bring your hands into Yana Mudra. Close the eyes and look at the space in between the eyebrows. Feel the gentleness of your breath. As you were, as you're inhaling, imagine you're smelling a flower. And as you exhale, exhale so softly. You don't want to blow the pollen off of the flower. to the grace of God. Namaste. Thank you, virtual yogis. I hope that this practice felt good in your body. I hope that it helped alleviate some of your suffering. Um, this is a really trying time right now. A lot of things are changing. There's a lot of uncertainties but the practice of yoga asks us to keep looking inside for our peace and then to help spread this peace to others with our presence, with our message, with our love and with our support. So you're doing the good work out there and I salute you.